Okay, my friends, are you ready for the next part of the course, which is AI generative fill or artificial intelligence? So we all had different reactions to AI. I was a bit reluctant at first, but when Adobe Photoshop came up with AI generative fill, I realized that I could use AI to my advantage and make some of the tedious processes a lot faster, a lot better. And now I actually love it, interestingly. So my first introduction to AI was actually for extending images. Basically, I hired a photographer to create these gorgeous images, but the format was all wrong. Basically, if you know YouTube or Skillshare, The thumbnail size is 1920 times 1080. Sadly, the images that the photographer created were too small, as you can see here. As you can see here, this is the YouTube size and this is the image that the photographer created. So I used AI generative fill to fill out the bits that I didn't have. And from far, it looks amazing, doesn't it? But as soon as you zoom in, you'll see that it's AI generated. But that's fine. I don't believe anyone's going to zoom in. And I did the same for this image. See? Not bad, right? And this image. Amazing. So I used AI generative fill here. And I did the same for all my images. So that's great. So that's what we'll do now. We're going to use AI generative fill and AI generative extend. So the next exercise will be taking these cropped images or taking these half images of unsplash and pixels and using AI generative fill to fill it out. And I want you to see how incredible this is. I basically took this image and I popped it into AI and it created this. Isn't that incredible? And another variation is this. And if you look at the eye, it's the same image, but a different outcome, which is incredible. So we'll we'll look at that in a bit. So I want us to select this image and open with Adobe Photoshop. And I want us to go to the crop tool. The new updated crop tool has now a generative expand built in inside that tool. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to click and drag and expand it. And we're just going to click on generate and see what Adobe Photoshop and AI comes up with. Now it's a bit hit and miss, right? Every time we use it, it comes up with something different. Sometimes it's weird, sometimes it's great. So let's see. The great thing is that it will automatically add a layer of generative expand here. And over here in the properties panel, we will be able to see three different variations each time. So we can click on this one. It's not bad actually. Let's look at the second one. Not bad. And the third one. So I quite like this one, actually, or perhaps this one. Yes, the second one. Now, if you don't like any of these, you can just click on generate again and it will generate three additional variations. One, two and three. So it's totally up to you which one you choose. Personally, once I've chosen one, what I tend to do is delete all the other ones using the bin or the trash icon. And then I right click and I rasterize layer. The reason why I do this is because when we use AI generative fill, it can make our files really massive. So anyway, I believe in repetition. So let's minimize this and let's do the exact same thing for this image open with Adobe Photoshop and we might still be on the crop tool. 
So we're going to click and drag and do the same thing here and press enter and generate without filling anything. If you don't fill out anything, Photoshop will just automatically fill it based on the surroundings. So generate. And that looks a little bit weird. <laughs> Let's see the next one. Not bad. Ooh, this is nice. Once you've chosen, you can delete all the ones you didn't like using the bin icon. Great. You're welcome to save it and go to file, save as, and save it as a Photoshop file. Or if you click on save a copy, you can save it as a JPEG. Perfect. Let's go ahead and close these files. And let's move on to this lovely, gorgeous, glittery eye picture and see what Adobe Photoshop will give us. This was just absolutely stunning and I'm really hoping that it will come up with something as stunning. But let's see. So let's go ahead and go to File, Open with Adobe Photoshop. Okay, brilliant. So now we're going to go to the Crop Tool and there's a bunch of ways you can do this. You can just in one go open and stretch it out or you can do piece by piece and click and drag and every time allow Photoshop to generate. And that's not bad. Let's look at the other options. Nice. Gosh, they're all nice, but I'll choose this one and yours might look completely different. So now let's zoom out and let's keep going. Generate. And every time you can crop it out and extend it a tiny bit and eventually see what it will come up with. Keep going. And again, and every time you'll have three prompts to choose from. So choose whichever you find best. And click and drag and even resize it a bit more and let's see what it will come up with. Wow, that's gorgeous. Let's look at the second one, different and interesting. And the third one, wow, that's gorgeous. It's incredible how every time I do it, it generates something completely different. I really loved the one I created before. And let me show you, it's definitely worth having a look. This, wasn't this incredible? So it's incredible how the same image will generate a completely different outcome. What I did before is I called it Glitter Bride, by the way. And I also created a different one, a completely different outcome from the same image. So it's just incredible and I'm really curious to see what your AI generated.